Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. We're going to create this, this, and this. These are animation presets in Adobe Premiere Pro. All right, so I use this all the time. If you've ever seen this little animation come up, this little bug, it's a Photoshop file with a preset that I apply to it. They're really simple to make. They're easy to import and use. Two ways to use them, these kinds of, of animations, you can either use the motion control or the transform. Transform gives you motion blur if you want. Let's have a look. So here are some of the examples that I have. They're single uh, images that I brought in as ping files, so they have transparency on them. And they're just simple animations, okay? So if I click on this one and open up I added transform. It's an effect down here. So in the effects, type transform, and you'll see it's in the distort category. I could use the motion settings up at the top if I wanted to, but transform allows me to turn off, use this composition angle. See, if I turn that on, it gives me motion blur. And I've added some keyframes in here for that. Same thing with this one and that one pop on. So let's create another one, a different animation. And for that, I'm going to go to my libraries and grab this logo here and drag it in. Okay. So here's the Pinterest logo. I want to animate because it's round. I want to animate it rolling onto the screen and ending up in the correct orientation. Pretty simple to do. Let's select that and move to the beginning here and I am going to add transform down here and I'm going to change the scale up in the top and the reason I want to do this is if I create an animation that changes the scale properties and I save that animation if I bring in a new logo or whatever and it's a different scale the animation might not look good. So if transform controls the animation and motion controls the position, anchor point, and scale, then I can bring in any animation, put my logo anywhere, and still use the animation. So let's go over and do this. So here's the first rule about animating. If the logo is already correct and it's in the right position, then I'm going to uh, set a keyframe now at the end of the animation. So I'll go to my uh, rotation right, and add a keyframe. So here is the animation, the rotation there. And I'll set a position keyframe because we're going to rotate this and uh, move it. So we'll go back to the beginning and I'm just going to move my mouse over top of this and drag this backwards. And you'll see it's minusing several times. So it's going to roll out about three or four times. Now, if we animate this, it's just going to stay in the same position. But if we also change the position, the X, and move that out, now when we animate that, it rolls and drops into position. It's a little bit too digital though. Bang, see how it snaps into position? That's because these keyframes are linear keyframes. So we can ease in for both of these. Now when we have this roll in, there it is. And if we turn off the use composition, composition's shutter angle, and use 180 degrees. Now when we move back here, see that little bit of motion blur on that? Now it flies out. Now you'll notice also that, there we go. And we might wanna ease out at the same time. We'll ease that out. There we go. It actually speeds up, so maybe the rotation Having easing out of the rotation isn't as good an idea. Actually, the easing out of there is probably not that great of an idea either. All right, so there's our animation. I'll right click on it and choose Save Preset. And I'll call this Roll On. I'm going to anchor it to the beginning and not scale it. 
The reason I'm doing this is I like the speed of the animation. So if I drop a graphic on that's five seconds, 10 seconds, two seconds, the speed will be the same because it's anchored to the endpoint. If I hit scale and drop in a longer one, then the rotation will be different. I can still always change the keyframes, but to me, the most important thing to save with this preset is the speed and the feel of that rotation. I'll click OK. And if we go down to the effects, and search for roll on, there it is, roll on. So now I can grab any of these other ones, like this one, get rid of my transform on here, drag roll on, and now the Twitter bird rolls on. And if I wanted to change where it was rolling on and the scale, I could go back up to the motion, change the position, change the scale, and now make it roll on over to there. Now, if I wanted it to roll on over to the other side, there might not be enough of an animation where it starts. So let's see what happens when we open this up. So when I go back to the beginning, you can see the animation started off the left. The rolling of the Pinterest logo actually started, uh, meet, ended with the logo in the middle. So it didn't go too far back, but I could just go back to the, the uh, transform and start this way over there. Now it's gonna roll out over to there. Oops. And I could save this now. Save, call this long roll on, and again, anchor this and click OK. So now I've got a longer roll on. OK, um, the other ones that I, I did in here, I wanted to show you that a little tip about how to create a quick little um, natural kind of movement, because if you drop something, if you drop a basketball, it doesn't drop from your hand and then hit the floor. It bounces a little bit. We're used to that. We see that everywhere we go. Things have that little, little movement before they settle down. They've, they've got inertia. So here's a really easy way to create an animation and give it a little bit of a bounce. So let's do a just a, a move in. So we're gonna have a logo come off the screen and move in. So let's grab um, the Instagram one again. Let's drag this over here. And again, I'll go to my scale and change it. And then back to the effects, I'll add transform. Okay, just like I said before, um, for this one, I'm going to actually start off the screen. So let's, at the beginning, We'll start with the position off the screen, and this is five seconds long, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. So now I want it to go past the position as if it was running out from the side and it went a little bit too far. So let's change the position. So right now it just zooms out to here. But what if the next keyframe made it go back a little bit? And then the next keyframe made it go back a little bit. And then the next keyframe, it settles into place. So now we have this. Oh, it's a little bit jerky. So let me move these out. Ooh, there we go. Try to keep these Try to keep them so they scale, larger, smaller, smaller, smaller. Now this looks pretty good. Um, again, we'll turn off the compensation and add a bit of motion blur so you can see it blurs into position. But what I did with the other ones is I also changed the animation to be less linear. So an easy way to do this is to select all of them, right click and choose Auto Bezier. And if we twirl down the, the position, you'll actually see 
this, what looks like a bouncing shape. Ooh, there we go. Ooh. And if we wanted to, we could move these around. And it's going to auto Bezier. Now, when we've, when you add auto Bezier or uh, ease and ease up, sometimes you'll see that it's still on the screen because the position keyframe is not linear. So I can go back to the first keyframe and push the position out. So now it's starting out of there. Ooh, there we go. Oh, that looks cool. Ooh. Actually, kind of like that. It's almost as if it looks out and then it, it it's kind of confused of what's going on. But it's got lots of character in there. It's shaking its head. And of course, you can go in and move these around. You can you can really, um, if you move your mouse into this area, you can drag that down and really start to play with these, these keyframes if you wanted to. You can either move these keyframes here or actually come down into this area and move them around. So we could save this now, save it as um, confused pop. There we go. And anchor that, click OK. All right, so now we've got a bunch of these animated things showing up. Now what are we going to do? Well, we can save all of those, as I said. So down in our presets, there's the confused pop, the drop in, the long roll, the pop on, the roll on, the speed right. All of these things are here. Now, what I do is because those are saved as presets, when I load up my, my show template, it's not really a template, it's just I go to the media browser and import uh, a project, I have all of uh, my graphics in there. So if you go to the media browser, Here is a project. When I double click on that, you'll see dynamic link server will load. And what I've done here is I have actually added a sequence and here's a sequence and a bunch of those same logos. So if I double click on the sequence, it opens it in the source window and you'll notice it says sequence 01 and there's parentheses around here. That means that we're peeking into this. We haven't opened it yet. So the animations are not part of the graphic. The animations are either saved in the presets or they're in the timeline. This is a way you can grab both the graphic and the animation by opening it up in the source monitor. Yes, just like before. <laughs> This is a uh, not a feature in CS6. So I could actually take this graphic here and I could drag it into my project. So if I um, give myself a pancake timeline, drag that down into there, that's it. That's how my logo works. All right, so animation presets, save them as presets or import them from a predefined uh, graphic that you have. And you could still import a whole project or a whole timeline in an old version of Premiere Pro. That's a really good way to create some cool looking animations and reuse them over and over again. Save you lots of time. If you found this informative, um, hopefully you have. If you're new to uh, Video Revealed, please take a moment and subscribe. If you want to take your support up a notch, join us over on Patreon for as little as one little dollar a month. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to get you looking your best. Mm -hmm.